Good evening. Uh, my name is Kristen Ike. I'm the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for the City of Deltona, and I'm calling the Special Magistrate hearing of February 22nd, 2023 to order. The first thing on the agenda is the roll call. So I will have all of the Code Enforcement Officers introduce themselves. Mark Gibson, Code Compliance Supervisor. <laughs> Richard Lovett, Code Compliance. Majority Bill, Fire Department. Okay. Renee Kearney, hearing, hearing clerk. Thank you. All right, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is my statement about how the hearings are going to run tonight, and forgive me, I'm going to read this so I don't forget anything. We are here tonight because the city of Deltona has contended that there are violations of the Deltona city code that exist. This is a public hearing, which means that no general public comment will be accepted, but each of the respondents and the code enforcement officers here tonight and any witnesses each of you call will be able to present evidence to me regarding each case and the violations of the Deltona City Code that are being alleged. I am an attorney and appointed by the City Commission to render decisions in these code enforcement cases to determine if a violation of the City Code exists and what fine will be imposed if any. If you are here for a Massey case, which you might see that next to your case number on the agenda, that means that I will be determining solely whether you have come into compliance in a timely manner in accordance with the previous order that the special magistrate issued in your case and will not be reopening the case to determine whether or not a violation existed. Any decision that I make this evening will be put into a written format in the form of an order. A copy of my written order will be provided to the city and then mailed to you as well. It is important to note that for any order I issue, you may appeal by sending a written notice of appeal to the circuit court within 30 days of the execution of my order pursuant to Florida Statutes Section 162.11. The procedure of the hearings today will be governed by Chapter 162 Florida Statutes. Formal rules of evidence shall not apply, but fundamental due process shall be observed and shall govern the proceedings. Hearsay is admissible, but only to support other competent and substantial evidence. If you are a respondent, you will be able to testify, tell me what you think I need to know about your case, present evidence and witnesses. Your testimony will be under oath, so I will be swearing you in and this hearing is being recorded. For each case, I will call the case number and the city will proceed first. The city has the burden of proving that this code violation exists. Then you will be allowed to respond. I will take the cases in the order that you signed in, first come if first served. Um, and I do have one announce, further announcement on a case that was withdrawn, which is 23-110. And I will state the address. Give me a moment. That would be 783 Fort Smith Boulevard, uh, Deltona, Florida. Uh, Amen Mukesh and Amen uh, Gita M. All right. All right, I will swear in everyone who intends to testify today as a group, which includes the code enforcement officers. So will you please stand if you intend to testify and if you intend to speak to me and raise your right hand. 
Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. Thank you. All right, I will proceed with the first case. All right, this is case number 23-124, 2820 Howland Boulevard. This will be case number DEL 23-124, the City of Deltona versus Connie Biancardi. The property address is 2820 Howland Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 813-039-090-090. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the Pro International Property Maintenance Code, Section 701.2 which states that the owner of the premises shall provide and maintain such fire safety facilities and equipment in compliance with these requirements. A person shall not occupy as owner occupant or permit another person to occupy any premises that do not comply with the requirements of this chapter. Corrective action for said violation is to repair the fire safety deficiencies. The electrical panel must be closed and a clearance must be ma maintained in accordance with fire safety codes. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case began on May 30th, 2022 from a fire inspection report. The fire safety deficiency has existed since the initial fire inspection on October 5th, 2021. I posted a notice of violation on May 30th. On June 13th, I visited the property with Fire Inspector Bailey and Fire Marshal Shivers. We were granted access to the garage area and viewed the electrical panel, but the amount of storage made it impossible to approach the panel. On July 12th, I posted a notice of hearing at the property. Contact was made with Ms. Biancardi, and on July 25th, I visited the property with Fire Inspector Bailey, Fire Marshal Shivers, Assistant Director Lovett, and the building official. During this meeting, we continued the initial uh, special magistrate case, and Ms. Biancardi stated that she was closing on a house, and she was going to have all the storage removed from the property, and agreed that 90 days was a reasonable time to remedy de the deficiencies. Since this meeting, Ms. Biancardi has had 213 days to remove the storage to allow access to the blocked electrical panel. On February 2nd, 2023, Fire Marshal Shivers and Fire Chief Snyder reinspected this property, but were not granted access to view the garage area, including the electrical panel. During this inspection, it is documented in the report that storage and other areas of the property still remained. A notice of hearing was posted on February 12th. A reinspection by fire inspectors during which they can view the electrical panel and verify that it complies with all fire safety codes is required to put this case into compliance. The city is concerned because this is a major fire safety issue. The electrical panel is blocked and as such cannot be inspected to verify that it is maintained and in good repair. If an electrical fire were to occur in the plaza, there is no clearance maintained around the panel, making it impossible to access the panel to flip the breakers to shut off the power. It is important to note that the plaza is not vacant and does have businesses that operate in other units. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $250 per day be imposed until such a time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, um, so can you explain um, on, well, let me get to the uh, section again. So the section states the owner shall provide and maintain such fire safety facilities and equipment in compliance with these requirements, meaning the requirements of the IPMC, yes. correct? So what was what is the section that requires, if I'm understanding the, the issue, what is the section of the IPMC that requires the um, open access to the panel? Um, Mr. Lovett, do you know exactly which chapter that is? So in the, we were going by the fire deficiency codes. Um, Wait, do you have that number there on that one? I don't have the exact code reference. I just can reference NFPA 70, which is the National Electrical Code. 
Okay, I'd have to get, if you give me a moment, I can get the, the, the code reference. Okay, from. is that incorporated by reference into this um, chapter seven of the IPMC? Chapter um, seven, 701 does cover all fire deficiencies that are notated by the fire, de by, by the fire department. I don't, th I mean, I don't know that I agree with that. It says that you are to, um, the owner shall provide and maintain the fire safety facilities and equipment in compliance with these requirements, which suggests it's, it is the requirements in chapter seven of the IPMC. So is there a, um, does it somehow, like I said, incorporate by reference the NFPA or? If you want to, if you want to, I can continue this case um, for do it, do another one and come back to it. Go ahead and um, let's go back to that one. Let's go back to twenty three one twenty six, which is the same property, and I'll go grab the international property maintenance book because I think it does have a reference, but we'll verify that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I obviously not coming in knowing what it was, you know, what the issues were. I, mm -hmm. I don't know where exactly in this chapter, um, you know, you're looking to okay. for, for the actual violation. So that's my question. And if it incorporates the NFPA, that's fine, or if there's, you know, if there's another section in here that talks about access to the panel, um, but I'll come back to it okay. in a moment. All right. All right. All right. You're going to look for the one for one, two, five. Okay. Okay. All right. So I don't know if the, the property owner is here, correct? Yes. Okay. Ma'am. Okay. So I'm going to come back to this case in just a moment. All right. All right. Can Myra, Myra, can somebody make sure she get that mic? Yeah. Um, you want 126 or 125? Which one is that? I can do. Did Miss Ike? Yes. Myra and San Miguel City Delta Tunnel of Code um, 701, or excuse me, 701.2 talks about responsibility, shall provide and maintain such fire facilities, and then it moves forward into aisles in 702.2, the required width of aisles for the International Fire Code and the IPMC. All right, I just said I was gonna come back to it, so can we come back to it? <laughs> All right, because Mr. Levitt's not in the room. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead with case 23-125, which is 2820 Holland Boulevard as well. Can we hold off on that when it's related to fire safety as well? Okay. How about 23-126? Yes. Okay, also 2820 Holland Boulevard. My name is Kristen Coulter. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-126, the City of Deltona versus Connie Biancardi. The property address is 2820 Howland Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 813-039-090-090. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who attends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is re regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make an application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Cor corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for change of occupancy. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. 
All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day, on the day they were taken. This case began on May 30th, 2022 from a fire inspection report. Um, the deficiency has existed since the initial inspection on October 5th, 2021. I posted a notice of violation on May 30th. On June 13th, I visited the, visited the property with Fire Inspector Bailey and Fire Marshal Shivers. We were granted access to view Unit 7 and the large amount of residential storage that exists in this unit. During this inspection, Unit 7 appeared to be in use as a residential living space, equipped with a kitchen, full bathroom, and a bedroom. This is a commercial property that had been homesteaded. The Volusia County property appraiser was made aware of the homestead status on the property property and the exemption was then removed because this is a commercial property and not a residential location. On July 12th, I posted a notice of hearing at the property. Um, contact was made with Ms. Biancardi and on July 25th, we visited the property um, with Fire Inspector Bailey, Fire Marshal Shivers, Assistant Director Lovett and the building official. Uh, during this meeting, we agreed that 90 days was a reasonable time to remedy the deficiencies and remove the storage and cease use of the unit in a residential or storage capacity. The bed has been removed, but other storage still does remain. Since this meeting, Ms. Biancardi has had 213 days to remove the storage from this property and return it to its original use as a commercial business. On February 2nd, 2023, Fire Marshal Shivers and Fire Chief Snyder re-inspected this property and noted that there is still a large amount of residential storage that exists. A notice of hearing was posted on February 12th. It is important to note that Ms. Biancardi has reapplied for a homestead exemption on the commercial property since our meeting. The city would like to request 60 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $100 per day to be imposed until such a time that the property has notified, property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, so this one is, if I understand correctly, it was a change of use from commercial to residential? Yes. Okay, and the date to come into compliance was 6 10 and um, can you play the pictures again for me just that are recent? What is the state? I can't see. Can you read the date to me? I think that is June 13th, 2022. Um, on the most recent fire inspection report from February 2nd, there should be updated pictures from the fire inspectors. Not in there. Kristen is not in there. Um, I have all of them printed out. Oh, I think I just saw one. It was that was from February. That. Go back there. Yeah. Number okay, number four. Picture number four. Okay, but that's just the front door. That's just the posting date. The recent inspection, reinspection that myself and the fire chief did, dated 2223. On the very back page, there are pictures that shows that she did come into compliance with removing what we were looking at as a, a bedroom. Okay. And I'll refer to picture 1.1 in the report. All right, yes, okay, so I have the inspection from 2-2. Two, two.
what kind of storage items were remaining? Are these, um, the, are these the pictures? The only access that we were able to gain on the February 2nd reinspection was actual suite seven. So the bedroom, which is 1.1, picture 1.1, the storage bedroom was removed. The 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 pictures were still um, of suite one or suite seven. The areas that we were not able to gain access to, uh, Connie did not have keys that day to get us into the garage. Um, and there's also an additional s storage unit or storage area that is um, accessed off of the interior stairwell that if you'll refer back to the previous, re or previous reinspections, you'll see those pictures, but we have not been able to gain access back into those units to confirm that there's compliance. Okay, um, so I'm struggling to understand how the, if, if they've removed the bed, what evidence do you have that they're using it for residential purposes? In my, in my opinion, the being used for residential purposes is no longer because she complied with the requirement to remove the bedroom. So okay. that violation is clear, in my opinion. Okay. The, the bigger issue is the second part of it, which is being used as a storage facility, and it's not utilized appropriately with tenant separation, means of egress, et cetera, which also is, is designated um, in this report. But the living situation, it, it to me, is not an issue for fire any longer. So the issue then is the change of use from business occupancy to storage? I'm, I'm not quite understanding. So it appears that th this building was permitted under the county. And when the building was taken over by us, once we became a, a city, we inherited this building. Um, we can't find any records of how it was initially supposed to be used, intended use. It looks as though it was intended to be used as an apartment on the second floor with business below. Um, by doing so, even in the existing chapter of the code, it's not permitted to be utilized for anything other than a business if she wanted to use it for that purpose because you would not need tenant separation. Um, the other issue that we that we have with that is the means of egress. There's only one sole means of ingress and egress out of that tenant space. Um, it's unprotected and it's got openings, which is not permitted. So essentially, that that space cannot be used at all unless she brings it up to current code. So. Originally, it was being used as, I didn't, I didn't want to go under the assumption that she's, it's a residence or a storage. I gave her the benefit of the doubt and said, in my opinion, this is what the pictures are demonstrating. It's being used for one or the other, but it's not being used for a business occupancy, so tenant separation is required. Then you'd have to go through the change of occupancy permitting process to bring it up to current code. So the living situation was remedied, which for my comfort level on a life safety standpoint was my biggest concern. The second biggest concern is the amount of storage that's being utilized in what is not intended to be used as a storage facility. But we don't, we don't have any evidence that there was a change of use because you don't know what it was originally permitted as. Correct. If you, yeah, we'll, we'll go I with mean, that. Because the, the issue, uh, the way it's cited is that it's a violation of the building code, which, and that there is a change of occupancy, right? Or change of. Let, change let me of see use. how the wording was. Where's my 105? 
Right. Any owner yes. or owner's authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building um, shall obtain a permit. So how do I know that there was a change of occupancy in this case? Um, Connie, if you want to chime in, I know that it was also being utilized as her tax um, or what were you doing? Taxes up there or notary? There was, it was a notary office that she claimed to be using it for, but we didn't have a business tax receipt for that, so I told her. Uh, no, I do have an EIN number for that, for my notary, and I also have that was used by her to Okay, so based on her comments, it was being used originally as a business. And I, I do wanna add, this is the first time that a fire inspector has been able to get into Suite 7. So I don't know what it's been used for in the past other than what Ms. Van Cardi is explaining it to be used as. Okay, so your because it was originally used as a, you said a notary, notary. or a mortgage office? No, no, no. It was originally a mortgage company there. A mortgage company. But it was built in 1991. Okay. All right. So there was a mortgage company there, and now it is being used for storage of personal belongings. Personal items. And that requires se uh, separation? Yes, tenant separation, tenant which separation. Um, don't quote me, I believe is two hours and that would be floor ceiling. And if there, um, there shouldn't be any tenants uh, uh, adjacent to her, but the floor ceiling at a minimum would re be required. Okay. If she wanted to use it for that purpose. All right. If she wanted to use it as a business, that is allowable and would not be constituted as a change of occupancy, but then we have the means of egress needing to be brought up to code. Okay, but at this time, it's being used for resident storage of personal items. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, Ma'am, do you wanna come, f or well, you can stay in your seat if you like, but I'm do you? Hard to stand. I'm really sorry. No, that's that's perfect, perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. You can stay seated, but do you want to um, address, you know, let me know anything about this case? Can you use yes. the microphone too? Yes, yes. Um, I have, in 1991. Oh, I'm sorry. And did you state your name and address for the record? Thank yes, you. Yes, my name is Connie Biancardi. My address is 2820 Howland Boulevard. Number seven, Daytona, Florida, three two seven two five. But right now, I reside with my son Kenneth Biancardi in 1395, like a Cedar Street in Daytona, until I can find my house, so I can move all my personal belonging of my furnishing there. That is only a hutch, two mattress, a sofa and two TV in that area there, and some clothing there that is gathered in the floor. And there is, in the area where they call it, that it was a bedroom, there is a love seat that is part of my uh, living room furnishing when I came back in, in 2018. I have been out of the, out of the area I was in Texas since, since 19, um, uh, for 10 years I live in San Antonio, Texas, and seven years in Dallas, okay? And I came back in 2018, that's when I came back, and that's when that place was done like that. Right now, I had, 90 days to do this, but what happened was that uh, we encountered the hurricane of Ian, which came in September, and that collapsed those 90 days, but I have not been able to find a home for me to buy because I didn't qualify for anything more than 190,000. 
this year in February 4th was the first time that the mortgage company, and according to what I had in my income tax, they went ahead and they increased this year to $240,000 a house, which I can't find in Deltona. And for this reason, I have asked them to please have some consideration and compassion. I'm 81 years old, and I don't appreciate, I'm one of the pioneers of Deltona, with Deltona Lake Realty, Deltona was a community, and today it's a city, thanks to Milbert Piper and myself. We had a community here, and we made it a city. At that time, when I had the plaza done in 1991, <coughs> the city of Deltona was not here until five years later. The county of Volusia was the one who came and gave all the, every time they did one drawer and they finished this year, they came, they inspected and they approved it. Everything was approved by the county of Volusia, the construction and zoning department. My deceased husband was the one who built that plaza, and he was licensed for the state of Florida, and we built thousands of houses here and everywhere at the time. We had been here, I have been here for 55 years and raised my four children as a single mother at that time, and I worked very, very hard to have and to make what I did in the past and raise my four kids. And later on, 18 years, I married. And that's when I married my deceased husband, who was the builder here, who helped also to develop Deltona. So, so what I'm trying to say now to you is that everything that is <coughs> over there, all these years, it was past inspection with the fire department and it was fine all these years. Now, because there was, since I came back in 2018, they started the fire department that this is out of code, this is out of code, this is out of code. Everything was in compliance with the code then at the time. And that area there was closed for 17 years because I was in Texas first, like I said, in San Antonio, Texas, and 95 Sir Galahad, and in and seven years in Dallas, Texas, and 124, 21 in Eustis, Texas, Dallas. So what I'm trying to say now is that they think that I have built all this the other day, no. This was already approved by the county and by the fire department then. Mm -hmm because I wasn't here. Look so, at all the years that I wasn't here. It was since 2004 that I left here, okay? Because I couldn't make ends meet here on the real estate. I was the real estate broker here, and I retired 23 years, right. um, 53 so, years later, because I was over there and then over here. So what I'm trying to say is that they had, when they told me, when Mr. R.G. went over there with the, with Ms. Seaver, and they said that um, I was in, I was in violation of the panel, the electrical panel. What I did, I told them that when they come back, it will be, um, move the stuff over so they will have 36 inches space that they need. Well, I do have here in my camera where I took so, pictures with the measuring tape to prove to you that that has been there since 2001. Okay, so let's um, reserve that part of it for, I think, the other case. This one is related to the change of occupancy, so I appreciate that you've, um, you know, the building has existed for a long time, but I think, and perhaps the, um, am I fire marshal? And Marshall, okay, the, um, can address that, but I believe what you're saying is that there was a change of occupancy recently, right? Yeah. Um, that, and that that would not have triggered, you know, an issue previously for previous inspections since there was a change of occup or change of 
uh, occupancy. Um, again, this was the first, October 5th, 2021, was the first time any Deltona fire inspector has had access to that suite. Okay. So I can't speak on how long it has been that way. Mm -hmm. um, we've just never had access to it. Okay. Um, I can add to it if you'd like, Your Honor. Um, the property is zone C1, and one of the things that really took this and took it into that, that somebody was living there, is the property was homesteaded, and she filed paperwork stating with the property appraiser that she did live there at that time. And, and that was, that was in yeah, and 2021? And that was in 2021. They have removed it. Um, I did receive a phone call at the beginning of the year where she did apply for it again. She was denied. Um, but that's what prompted everything on that. I see. All right. And ma'am, they're asking for 60 days for you to obtain the permit for the change of, um, of occupancy to the storage of your personal belongings. So is, is that going to be? I cannot do it and I am crippled. I cannot do it in 21 days, like you say, you know, it's two 60, months. 60. I need, a, I need around five months because I'm all by myself. I don't have a soul that can help me. I have damage from that hurricane in downstairs that flooded the, the unit and I cannot rent it. I've been looking for, we are in a recession and I'm looking for somebody to rent that. I don't have the funds. I don't have the money. I have been, I had to borrow money so I didn't want mildew to accumulate in the walls of the unit downstairs, number six. And what I did, I borrowed the money for a man to come and clean up and remove that and put the fence so it will not get mildew in the walls because the hurricane, I don't know how, it broke the window. The window is seven feet tall and it was very low and something went in and all the water went in. And we had the hurricane that did that damage and FEMA will not help me and will not qualify me because they said they had needed $6,500 damage. The same thing with my insurance was $6,500. And it was not $6,500, it was only $3,500 damage. So this is what I'm saying. I had to borrow all that money in order to do this. And now they want me to clear out all the stuff. Oh, by the way, Your Honor, I'm your Majesty, I, I had, um, my my deceased husband, I remember the blueprint. There is a crawl spade of 12 inches from suite seven to suite six. And they're saying that I cannot have my personal uh, furnishing there, which is hardly any furnishing there. It's only stuff, you know, little things there. Okay. The only thing that is big is a hutch, a sofa, and two, and, and two TVs, that's it. Um, that's all there is there. And a love seat in the other, uh, in the area where they call it that. And I also had paid somebody to go and remove <coughs> and restore that, that bathroom. There's no shower there. Okay. And I have told that to them when they came last time, but they didn't take care of it. They didn't put it up today. And I have put it up today when they called my attention about, about that you, taking care that of That you that. removed the shower? Oh, yeah, there's no yeah. shower there. Okay. That so, has been, I had to beg somebody to come and do it and remove everything that will be from a residential or whatever out. And everything is back to the, the original state when it was built in 1991. So um, for the fire marshal, is there any um, issue with, with what she's saying that there is a separation in the between the units? I'm not quite sure That's that would be your expertise. So if I can draw your attention back to the initial fire inspection report. Yes. Um, which I believe was dated October 5th, 2021. 
again, that essentially is the last time that we were able to gain access into the additional areas where the storage is. We're talking, she's referring, Ms. Vincardi is referring to specifically Suite 7, where she has some of her still personal belongings being stored there. There's a whole nother part of this with the garage and with a separate storage facility, or I don't want to call it a storage facility, with a separate room that is being used for storage that is completely off the grid from, from Suite 7. So we have kind of a two-part two thing here. Suite 7 needs to be removed of the storage. We, we have plenty of storage facilities in the area now. Um, and then the garage and that, that separate room that comes off of the stairwell, which again is her sole means of ingress and egress to that Suite 7, needs to be removed of all storage. Or she needs to go through the proper permitting to do tenant separation. Okay. I just I, I, <coughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, they, they even want me to take out what is in the garage. That is the garage that was built like that. The garage was built like that in 1991, July 1991. And she's talking about the garage area that is separate from the Suite 7. Okay. So, and there was a storage there that it have never been a, a stove in there. It have never been anything to cook in there. It never been that, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that they didn't put up today when they told me the first time that I had it open, 36 inches opening for anybody to go and read the breaker, open the breaker with no anything obstructing there. So I took care of that right away, but they didn't put it up today. And no. every time that they say that there is an inspection and they go over and over and over, like if I ignore them, that's not true, your majesty. Please help me because this is not right. If I had all the money and I had the income because I'm the cheapest rental in there, in the area of, I'm on the rental and I don't have it, and I want to sell it, I want to get out. I don't want that headache. And this is too much for me, I'm too old for this. I'm supposed to be resting, and I'm not. This is too much, so, please help me. I, I'm, so I think that the five months is, is too long. Um, that's, that's quite a lot to ask, um, but I, I'll just ask the city um, is, are you uh, firm on the 60 days? If, if I may, the, the electrical panel that Ms. Bencardi is referring to was corrected, but that is an electrical panel that's in suite seven. There's an electrical panel in the garage that we can't get access to because of the storage. But, There's that, also but that is not related to the change of of occupancy for this case, correct? Correct, I just wanted to okay. make clarification right. that there's two panels she's referring to. Okay, um, so I'll ask again, is the city firm on the 60 days? Would she be removing storage or would you be going through the permitting process to Your do tenant separation? I a room and a storage over here, stored right in Howland Boulevard. I don't have the money to pay for that. That cost me too much. I cannot get another, I cannot get another storage unit to put this stuff and that's what they want me to do. I don't have the money. I don't have the income. The, the fire load that's in there is a concern for not only Ms. Bencardi, but her, her tenants that operate in there and the firefighters that will be fighting the fire should something happen. So in my opinion, 60 days is a reasonable amount of time to remove that storage. Okay. But I have to, I have to find a house in order to move all this stuff from between seven. And I, I need the time to find a house for 240. Okay, that's what I qualify for. And this, I cannot find a house in two months. I get out of there and bring that out. You're gonna bring me back here. If you want to keep putting to me, and keep charging me. You can and address me. Fine. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Discrimination on me. 
I'm an older lady. They're not helping me. They want to put me through the... Well, let me just... Sorry. No, I un I understand. I want to be I want to be fair, and we want to give you time to comply. But I also have to consider, you know, the safety issues that are being raised. So, and there are other options for you, like to find a storage unit if you can't find a house I within the sixty days. I can't do my so, but I will. Um, I think the request was for $100 per day. I think I'll reduce that to 75 um, at least. So, uh, but I am going to go ahead and I'm going to find a violation on this one. So I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct this violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, can you give me a 60 day, um, what's 60 day? Six days will be April 23rd. April 23rd. That's correct. If, if I may, Connie, would I would 90 would 90 you days? Can I amend I'll it to allow 90 days? Away. I'm sorry. I if I may, I may I okay, amend to make it 90 days. Okay, to comply. I'll 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 change it to 90. Can you give me 90 days? I'll put it out till May 23rd. May 23rd. I cannot believe you got into so incriminating. All right. <laughs> so I, I find that the, um, then I'm going to revise that so it will be before 4 o'clock p.m. on May 23rd. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please, ma'am, make sure that you... Please make sure that you stay in contact with the fire marshal and let her know when you come into compliance. All right. Do you want to move to the next, the fire uh, cases or no? Are you ready to go back to those? Yeah. All right, so then 23-124. Correct. Under the International Property Maintenance Code and their definitions, when terms are not defined in the code and are defined in the International Building Code, International Fire Code, International Zoning Code, International Plumbing Code, International Mechanical Code, or NFPA 70, such terms shall have the meanings ascribed to them as stated in these codes. Okay, so where are you um, citing? Under definitions. Okay. All right, but this just tells me that where a term is not defined, that I'm supposed to look to the NFPA. Um, so, where in the fire safety section does it say that the um, requirements are, of the NFPA are incorporated in this chapter? And I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm concerned that, you know, is this, is this really properly cited? If, if I may, um, when the storage is removed in 90 days, we'll have access to that panel. So I think it becomes a moot point. If you wanna either continue it or withdraw it. Because it's well, the electrical panel. Well, if the violation panel. currently exists, I mean, the issue is whether there's a violation, but whether or not, not only that, but whether or not this particular, the way this is cited, which is a violation of the IPMC, was really the correct way to, to cite it. I mean, I have to make sure that you, you're, um, you know, prosecuting the correct uh, 
citation, right? So I guess I'm not, I'm still not seeing the definitions as telling me, unless you're, you're telling me that there's some section either in, you know, section 702, 703, 704, is there something in here that talks to me about <coughs> access to the fire, to the electrical panel? No, it gives uh, general systems and devices and equipment. It's a very, it's a very general statement on it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Um, Ma'am, do you have anything you want to say to me about on this case? Excuse me. What's that? Oh, if you, do you have the microphone still? Yes, I got the one in my ear. Well, but she's bringing the microphone. Um, so thank you. State your name again, Connie, please. All right. Your Did name. you, what's that? I was just going to have her state her name again before we started. Yes. Can you state your name and address again for the record? Connie Gabe Cardi. And your address? 2820 Howland Brewer. Thank you. All right. Do you have any anything you want to tell me about this case, which I understand is is about the access to the uh, electrical panel? Correct. This is the first time I hear this about an electrical panel in the garage. They have never told me this. I'm shocked. I thought they were just fighting with the electrical panel in Suite Seven. And not only that, they should have said something so it could have made a little walkway in there to the panel if they're in the back of the panel. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Okay, if they would have mentioned to me that there was an, uh, an electrical panel in the garage, which I remember is in the back wall, mm -hmm. then somehow it could have been made a walkway for them to go in and see that they can open it. Okay. Um, are you willing to continue the case then to allow, I mean, if the issue is just access to the panel, if she's saying that she can, can move it? Yes, yeah, so I'm good with that. Okay. All right, I mean, I do see it says and under corrective action, clearance must be maintained in accordance with the fire safety codes. It, I guess it doesn't really specify which one, so I'm not sure she's saying she didn't really understand that it, which one you were referring to. So if we can continue the case to the next um, hearing, I suppose. Um, and also then give you an opportunity to consider whether you feel that this was the correct violation to pursue. Yeah, we can continue this one. We do also when we send these out, we do send a copy of the fire report with it so they have a full copy and understand everything that's on and what they have to do. So we make sure that copy goes to them too. Okay. All right, so then we will continue this to the March 29th so hearing. All right, so that was 23-124. All right. So let's go with 23-125, also 2820 Howland Boulevard. Marshall Shivers, if you want, would you like me to continue this one as well since it's referencing the same fire code? Is this suite four and five? No, this Which one is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll continue that. 
we'll continue this one to yeah. March, yeah. March 29th? Yes, only because when she removes the storage, I mean, it's gonna be up to, to Ms. McCarty what she wants to utilize that space for. Um, and in order to use it for the business, we'll have to um, go with permitting to bring the means of egress up to code. Okay. You might the street. Yes. I want to add that in order for me to move that stuff from there, I, since I can't afford to rent any more storage space, I need to buy a house. And that house, I'm going to make it a storage for what I can see. Some stuff is going to be thrown out, and whatever I can use, I'm going to use in my house. But it takes time for me to find a house, and then I go FHA, that takes 30 days. So that's another 30 days, another month gone by, and I don't have a house, is what I'm trying to say. That's what I was saying, that the 90 days was so short, because then I'm going to be in fine, and not in compliance with what you just said, because I need to get everything out, and I don't have a place to move to get everything out of there. I can sympathize, but I've already rolled on that case, um, and we've already pushed out that deadline for you. So, like I said, there's other options for you to, you know, if you can reduce the amount of, um, you know, storage items and then, you know, put some in a storage unit or something like that in the interim. Um, but it can't, it can't continue. So I'm, I've already rolled on that. All right, so on 23-125, then we're gonna continue that one to March 29th as well. Um. No consideration whatsoever. No compassion. All right. All right, this is 23 127, also 2820 Howland Boulevard. My name is Kristen Coulter. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-127, City of Deltona versus Connie Biancardi. Property address is 2820 Howland Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 81309-0390-90090. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish or change the occupancy of a building or structure or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make an application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for the wall that was removed. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case began on April 6, 2022 from a fire inspection report. The fire safety deficiency has existed since the initial fire inspection on October 5, 2021, when a wall was put up separating units four and five without a permit. The wall was then partially removed to reconnect the units without a permit. The wall was then removed entirely, also without a permit. I posted a notice of violation on May 30th. On June 13th, I visited the property with Fire Inspector Bailey and Fire Marshal Shivers. We were granted access to view units four and five and the wall that separated these units that had been removed. Ms. Biancardi was made aware of the need for a permit for the work that had been done and stated that she had a contractor coming by that week to initiate the process of getting the work permitted. On July 12th, I posted a notice of hearing at the property. Um, on July 25th, I visited the property with Fire Inspector Bailey, Fire Marshal Shivers, Assistant Director Lovett, and the building official. During this meeting, it was stated that 90 days was a reasonable time to remedy the deficiency. Since this meeting, Ms. Biancardi has had 213 days to obtain a permit for the wall that was removed. On February 2nd, 2023, Fire Marshal Shivers and Fire Chief Snyder reinspected this property and noted that no permits had been applied for. A notice of hearing was posted on February 12th. To date, there have been no permits for the walls applied for. All right, thank you. 
the city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day be imposed until such a time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, and this was a wall that separates two units? Yes. That was removed? Yes. Okay. Um, and the you are recommending? 30, 30 thir days or $50. 30 days. Okay. Please. All right, ma'am. You, yes, if, please. Um, can you please state your name again and, and address um, for the record? Each one, each case is separate. So, Connie Van Carden. Is that what you want my name? Yes, and your address. Twenty eight twenty Holland Boulevard. Thank you. Your Magistrate, I did not do that. I have some tenants that he put them out. A jury put them out. They destroy this place, but thank God I had um, a, a, a license, um, licensed person who came and checked that out and said there was none. And then I had Mr. Lynch. He went there and he looked at it and he said, just get the contractor to come and, and give me the information of what is there and pay the permit and that's it. And I said, okay, so I'm waiting for that man who's licensed by the state of Florida to do that, but he's such a busy man that he haven't got around to come. And there is tenants there, and Mr. Lynch did not want me to lose my tenant because that's all I have. Then what happened? Then I lost, I lose the building because I don't have no money to pay the building. The taxes are very expensive. The insurance is horrible. And the maintenance and the building, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I can't, I don't have the income. I don't have nobody to give me money. So I can get these things done. But anyway, I got this man that he is working on that. And he came here to the city of Deltona and talked to Mr. Lynch. He's the construction manager, I guess. And, and he talked to him, and Mr. Lynch says, okay, Ms. Biancardi, I'm not gonna let you lose the rental of that because that's all you have, and a barber. And with $3,000, I cannot cover for all the things that has to be done, and, I, and all the expenses of the insurance and the taxes and everything that I have to pay for maintain that building until I can sell it. I'm trying to sell it and get rid of it. And that's what I have right now. I don't want to be there. I don't want it. I'm too old for this. I, I understand. What is what? How long do you think you need in order to apply for the or to apply and obtain the permit? Well, probably 90 days. So he this man to do it because I'm not going to do it. He's the one who have to work with Mr. Lynch. Okay. Mr. Lynch is here in the city of Daytona. Um, Mr. Levitt, I see you shaking your head. Is 90 days acceptable to you? I think 90 days would be acceptable as long as we don't have a tenant in that. As long as it stays empty, 90 days. And okay. that's the main thing is we can't have it occupied until we have it corrected. I will tell Mr. Lynch to work with the builder so he can get together and take care of it because that's what they started. But then the hurricanes came and all this mess came. The two Ian hurricane and Nico here, and it killed the whole thing for the rest of the year. We didn't even get, just by one day, we were able to have a dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, because the, that's how far the hurricane went, all the damage on the disaster that we have here in Daytona. Yeah. I understand, and, and there's been, what, 200 some days? It's 213 since we agreed on 90. Yeah, in the so, case. so, you know, there's been quite a bit of time, and I'm gonna give you some more time. I'm gonna give you another 90 days, all right? So, um, 
I'm going to, I find uh, respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before one o'clock p.m. or sorry, four o'clock p.m. on, that would be May 23rd, correct? 90 days? May 23rd, uh, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please, ma'am, stay in contact with the, um, the code compliance officer to make sure they know when you get your permit. All right? Yes. Thank you. Of course. All right, case 23-140-2912, Maldive Court. Good evening. My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This would be case number DEL 23-140. The City of Deltona versus Daniel Garcia Rivera and Maritza Garcia. The property address is 2912 Maldive Court. The parcel ID number is 813-041-610-120. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 66-19, Subsection 3, which states that boats, trailers, recreational vehicles shall not be parked or stored either within a public right of way or within the portion of the lot lying across the full width of the lot between the front lot line or front most part of the principal structure. The corrective action is, uh, is to park the boat, trailer RV on the side of the house behind the front face or in the rear yard, but not within the street yard. Please move the vehicle to proper parking area or remove, the prop, uh, remove from the property. All vehicles must have a current tag and be operable or they must be stored in an enclosed garage. The statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was opened back on January 19th, 2023, um, due to a complaint from a resident. Um, this case went straight into a notice of violation posting due to the property previously um, having a trailer in the driveway back in August of 2022. Uh, the property did not comply on the 10th day after the notice of violation was posted. Um, the notice of hearing was then hand delivered to a gentleman um, in the driveway on February 10th, 2023. Um, as of today, the property is currently in compliance um, and we would like to ask um, for this property to be a repeat if the same violation occurs again. Okay, so they uh, did not come into compliance by 129, 2023, but, yes, but at this point they are in compliance. They're in compliance now, yes. Okay. And um, do you have a, a picture after 129? Yeah. If I can't see. This is one is 211. 211, thank you. This would be picture number two. All right. And that is a, and the issue is that trailer? It, it's, it'd be the, uh, the trailer that's in the driveway um, on the white one. Okay, the issue is the trailer on the driveway? Yeah, so um, the pictures, I'm not sure if, these are pictures that I took a few weeks ago, not when the case was originally started. Um, it was originally that white trailer. Um, I believe last week when I went out there, um, that black trailer was also added there. Um, okay. But the picture that I took today, there's no trailers in the front portion of the property or on the driveway. Okay, so after the, okay, can you go to the picture, the 211 picture? I'll That's 211. 211. Okay, so the issue is that kind of um, dark, it's a black or dark green trailer that's in the front yard at there's that time? There's one here on the left, there's one here, and there's one over here. 
Yeah, back on the on January 19th, it was originally just a trailer in the driveway. Then when I went back out to the property on the 11th, that's when two extra ones were added. So it still falls under that same violation. Um, but today's picture that I did take, there, everything's been removed from the front portion of the property. Okay. Well, I guess my only issue is that if it's parked in the driveway, that is permitted, right, for at least um, temporarily? Um, if it's actively being worked on for three days, then it's allowed there. But from when I originally arrived there on the 9th, it was not being worked on. Okay. All right. All right. I find uh, respondents in this case... Uh, it was, yeah, respondents were in violation of the city code as charged and failed to correct the violation by the time specified for correction by the code enforcement officer that the violation is now corrected and no fine be imposed. Any violation of the same code by respondents within five years from the date of this order shall be treated as a repeat violation for which a fine of up to $500 per day may be imposed. I forgot to uh, say that I'm, and, and this is for everyone, I'm going to admit as an exhibit the um, the uh, case file. So, and you should have received one when you came in. So if you don't have one, please let me know when you come up. Would you like them to come to the podium? Well, the residents are here, ma'am, if you want to. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Thank you. Um, yes, the, if the resident is here, please come forward. Yeah, yes please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, my excuse me. My name is Maritza, and I'm here with my parents, uh, Daniel and Maritza. That's their property, 2912 Maldive Court. Is that it? Okay. Did you want to tell me anything about the case? Um, yes, basically, just just to get a little background. Um, like I said, my parents are the ones that live there. I live separately with my husband. We have our own home. But um, the situation is that my father is the one that lives there, and he has two vehicles. The, registered and one vehicle was in the garage it was no bother nothing like that but my brother um, he moved in with my father and this is all his stuff like nothing belongs to my father my father currently lives with me because my mother is over there in the corner she has progressive Parkinson's and so I had to move her into my home since she's in a wheelchair it's more accessible in my home for her to, to take care of her so my father moved in um, with me as well so he was not staying at the home we had no idea how all this violations and all these things were happening until a neighbor let us know what was going on that the city was coming out there. So I looked for the information and I got in contact with um, Officer Tyler Russo where he filled me in constantly about what was going on and things like that. I explained to him that we get no mail because we don't have a good relationship with my brother and like I said, he has pretty much bullied his way and controlled the house. Um, so basically, um, there was a notice that was sent uh, to the home and I, I told um, Officer Russo that if there was anything that we needed to do, that my father has never been opposed to taking care of any issue. It's not really him, it's my brother that's causing all the issues. And I didn't want my father to be liable for what was going on. And I know he is because he is the homeowner. So the last notice that we got, um, uh, Officer Russo let us know that it was in the, in the sent to the post office. So we went to pick it up there and signed off on it. But besides that, we have had no paperwork um, as to anything that has happened or any violations. We have only found out about the violations because after I knew from a neighbor, I spoke with Officer Russo and um, from online, obviously, when you can check what's going on online. So um, basically, um, him saying that the home is in compliance right now is actually a surprise to us because we have not gone over there. So um, we're glad that it is. <laughs> but um, you know, we had no idea. Um, with my mom having Parkinson's and my father had a stroke, not too long ago, we have been really swamped with doctor's appointments, and if you can imagine day-to-day -day life, I have muscular dystrophy. So 
all this stuff is just external extras and you know we 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 didn't know about it you know so we were just been handling the situations medically and just been pretty busy with that so okay um and that's basically it's just so you can get an understanding that all of that stuff is not even my dad's right all right well i understand um i'm i'm not going to change my ruling what i just did um i mean it it sounds like that you have you know the property is coming to compliance but um because it was after the date you know that can be counted as a repeat violation in the future so um please you know talk to your family make sure they understand that understand and going forward thank you so okay. much your, your majesty thank i appreciate you. it okay language barrier. That's why I was speaking on his behalf, just to let you know. Okay. <laughs> so. We have one more oh, wait, case for the same One location. more with this address? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I have 23-141? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed as, uh, by the city of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This would be case number DEL 23-141, the city of Deltona versus Daniel Garcia Rivera and Maritza Garcia. The property address is 2912 Maldive Court. The parcel ID number is 813-041-610-120. This is a violation of city of Deltona ordinance section 66-18, uh, subsection H, restrictions on trucks and other vehicles, which states a maximum of two vehicles may be parked in side or rear yards. The corrective action for said violation is to reduce the number of vehicles in the side or rear yard to a maximum of two vehicles. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed on the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted to City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was created on January 19th, 2023 due to a complaint from the resident. Um, I started this case with a notice of violation due to the property having the same violation exists back in August of 2022. The property did not come into compliance after the 10 days and the notice of hearing was handed to a gentleman who lives at the residence on February 10th, 2023. As of today, the property still remains in violation and no vehicles have been removed. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, and um, do you have a photo? This is a photo from... I'm going to the one today. This is today. Okay. And there's current. There's a maximum of two vehicles. Yes, ma'am. In the uh, side yards. And there's how, how many? Uh, I I can't tell exactly. There's more behind the house, but it's it's hard to get a photo from the angle. So I just took the best photos that I could. So and that so the two maximum of two includes the side yard and the rear yard, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I see at least four at this point. Yeah. Perhaps I mean, more. From what I've counted, there's been at, le at least six, but I, there's believed to be more. Okay, thank you. Um, Ma'am, did you want to speak on this case as well? Can you state your name and address again for the record? Yes, the name is Maritza. The address is 2912 Maldive Court. Um, you know, basically going back to what I was saying, um, you know, that's all his property at this point. You know, we've tried to um, get him out of the house. Um, it's kind of it's a, it's a family situation that we have right now, um, obviously. And it's coming down to basically we might have to go um, legally and evict him because he's not, he hasn't complied with us, hasn't complied with the city. And once again, you know, I'm very upset and bothered at the fact that my father's the one that, because it's his property, it's all coming down on him. And he's just not willing to take any responsibility for anything. So, you know, this, this is your brother, you said? My brother, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are his vehicles? Yes. Okay. Um, do you feel that a 30, day, 30 days will be sufficient to accomplish that? Um, is it a reasonable time to accomplish that? If, 
if we could get a little more, um, if, if it would be possible, just to be sure. I don't want, you know what I mean? I don't want to say 30 days and then something happened and then we can't do it in that time frame and then, you know, we get obviously fined for it. Yeah. Um, is the city amenable to at least 45? Yeah, 45 is appropriate. Okay. Um, can you give me a, a day for 45? April 8th. April 8th. Okay, I'll give you a little extra time. Okay, and so your honor, um, or your magistrate, sorry. Um, so then if, uh, just to understand, so by April 8th, if that's not done, then what, what is the situation? What happens? At that point, the city has requested that a fine of $50 per day would be imposed for each day that those vehicles stay on the property. Um, you can have, as he said, you can have two, um, but that's the maximum. Okay, and I just got one more question, because I know there was something, um, I was speaking to um, Officer Russo about, they were trying to remove the property from the home and then just be it um, up to the homeowner that if you want to get your stuff back, then you have to speak to the people who towed it or something like that, but the homeowner would not be fined for that. Am I correct on that one? We can, okay, never mind, okay. that's fine. All right. All right. Um, Okay, so I, f I find um, uh, the notices properly given in this case, and I'm admitting the case file as an exhibit. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on April 8th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code and Inspector to verify compliance with this order. So, and I heard you speak about perhaps a nuisance abatement is what it sounds like. So, yeah, I'm going to get with her. Okay, that. you'll discuss that option. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Your Magistrate. You're welcome. Case 23-095, 856 North at Moore Circle. My name is Lindsay Longstreet and I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL. 23-095, the City of Deltona versus Great Investor LLC. The property address is 856 North Atmore Circle, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 831, or excuse me, 813-069-010160. This violation is this is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 302.7, which states that all accessory structures, including detached garages, fences, and walls, shall be maintained structurally sound and in good repair. The corrective action for said violation is to remove or repair the structure. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and violation, or excuse me, the notice of hearing and notice of code violation have been sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraisal records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Uh, this was a reactive case. On December 14th, I arrived at the, the property in question and observed the fence to be in disrepair. I had spoken with a male tenant who explained that he just was a tenant. He um, was not the owner of the property. I had explained that it was a complaint about the fence being in disrepair. He stated that it had gotten damaged during the hurricane, um, and he would give all information to the, the landlord for fixing and correcting the violation. Um, I followed up on December 22nd, 2022, 
um, and the fence was still in disrepair with no progress made. I had posted the notice of violation on the property on December 22nd, 2022 um, for a compliance date of January 1st, 2023. Um, later that same day, I had received a call from the landlord, Ms. Santelli. Um, I had explained to her what the violation was and how to correct it, either by replacing and fixing the fence or completely removing the fence. Um, after she had told me that after that, the first and after the holidays, that she would get someone out to have the fence removed. Um, I arrived again January 5th and the fence was still in disrepair. And then again, I arrived on January 12th with the fence still in disrepair and no progress had been made. Um, nothing more was heard from the landlord about any of the issues with the fence or what her plan was, whether she was gonna fix it or remove it. Uh, notice of hearing was posted on February 10th, 2023, as the property was still not in compliance at that time. Today, February 22nd, um, at 2.20 p.m. I drove by the property and the fence still remains in violation. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, thank you. And I see that there's, is it that, um, I mean, I see that there's issues with perhaps the painting of it or, but there's also parts that are knocked down, correct? Yes, ma'am. So she had, where there's nothing now, um, the okay. fence was pushed over, and so she, the corrective action to be would be to completely remove the fence or fix the fence. Fix the gap that Yeah, exists. fix what's, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, is the property owner here? Yeah. All right. Can you state your name and address for the record? Marcia Santilli. I'm the owner of the LLC that own the property. You own the property? The LLC, yes. I didn't quite understand. The LLC, I great investor, own the property. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and did you have anything you wanted to tell me about the case? I, yes. I That house has three times. I just spoke with a lady. I, this house has been three times the fence gone down. I fixed it. When I got um, in December that letter, I just spoke with her. I say it's two options. I just tear down the fence completely or um, I am not able to do anything right now because it wasn't the only house that I got damaged with it. Uh, Ian. I have, I have other two properties that were hit very badly. Okay. And I spoke with her about that. So she said, go and remove all the woods that are down, that are hazard. And I did that. I said, okay, after the holidays, I will send somebody. And we did, in January 19, we removed all the wood that was uh, in the floor. So I went today and to the picture because I didn't, I really didn't understand what was the, um, the violation. Yes, I have the gap. I have the gap, but I, I told her it's either tear down all the fence or wait till I have able to put the space on the fence. And she mm -hmm. said, okay. So this is what I did. I just removed everything from the floor and I'm waiting to be able to fix the gap. Okay, so she is recommending um, 30 days in order to fix the gap. I um, will tear down the fence. What's that? I will tear down the or fence. Or tear it down. Yeah. Okay. So All right. if I tear, the, tear down the fence, I don't need to request any permit, right? Um, I don't know. Okay. okay. I will tear down the fence. Okay. All right. Thank you. So um, I am going to... Uh, find a, a violation, but I'll give you the 30 days to, to do that, all right, to tear down the fence. So um, I find that notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file as an exhibit, and I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, and what's 30 days? March 24th. March 24th. What was it, pain? You referred a pain. What was the pain? What is the issue with the pain? No? I didn't quite understand what you said. I'm sorry. Beside the fence, you mentioned something about the pain. 
Oh, I, I did mention that. Um, is that part of the, it's no. just, okay. okay. And, and if you were removing it anyway, that's not an issue, right? So. If I remove the fence, the, the stick, the, the stick that are uh, um, holding the posts, the panel, uh, yeah. I have to remove those too? Yes, I think so. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, I said uh, you have to correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on March 24th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact with the code, or code officer and she knows when you've removed it and that you've done that within the time to comply. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is case 23-046, 2643 Salters Court. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This would be case number DEL 23-046, the City of Deltona versus Stephen J. and Mark C. Whitney. The property address is 2643 Salters Court. The parcel ID number is 813-043-160-070. This is a violation of City of, Del uh, City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, author, agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building structure or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for the shed. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when done. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and not notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at, least, uh, at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was started back on October 20th, 2022. Um, due to a complaint about dogs being kept inside of a shed out in the backyard, um, I noticed the top portion of the shed from the street view and checked our record to see if there was a permit for the shed. Um, our records show that the application date was applied for back on September 12th of 2019 and expired in March 10th of 2022. Um, due to the permit being expired, I proceeded with the case and left the door hanger to obtain a permit for the shed. Leading up to before I posted the notice of violation on the 17th of November, 2022, uh, or 2022, um, I attempted knocking on the door multiple times and leaving my city card for the homeowners to get in touch with me so we can discuss the case. I have received a voicemail from the homeowner asking me to give them the call back, but every time I've called back, the phone goes to voicemail. I went back out to the property on February 10th, 2023 and posted the notice of hearing. As of today, I've still yet to make contact with the property owners and the property still has not obtained a permit for the shed. Uh, the city would like to request 30 days for the property to come to compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, thank you. Um, is the property owner here? Good evening, could you state your name and address for the record? Stephen Whitney, 2643 Salters Court, Deltona, Florida. Thank you. All right, do you have anything you'd like to tell me about your case? Um, I mean, 
it's an oversized building. I know it's out of the restrictions. It's a 30 by 12, so I won't get a permit anyways because your limit's 20 by 12, correct? Uh, I can't answer that. I wonder if one of the... I, I can answer that. There, there is a way that you could pull the permit for that. You just have to have all the specs. Make sure you're not the setbacks and everything else. So if you had the building plans and everything on that, we could look at that to see if your property would allow it. Okay. All depends on how much property you have and your setbacks. <clears throat> All right, and the corrective action is to either obtain the permit or I presume remove the structure, right? Whatever they would prefer, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, that would be an option as well. Okay. All right. Is, and is there anything else? Can I get 90 days to get into compliance? Um, you okay? So the city's requested thirty. What what's the city's response to that? I'd be I'd be fine with ninety days. Okay. All right. Um, then I will. I find that the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the exhibits um, as or the uh, case file as an exhibit. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on May 23rd. What was that? May 23rd. May 23rd. Thank you. Uh, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure that you stay in contact with him so he knows what you've decided to do if you're going to um, get a permit or uh, remove the structure. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Yep. Thank you. This is case 22-255, a Massey case for 2173 Clearwater Drive. This is a Massey case. My name is Daniel Ron. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code of Compliance Supervisor. This would be Massey case number DL22-255. The City of Deltona versus Thomas and Fania Wong. Property address is 2173 Clearwater Drive, Deltona, Florida 32738. The parcel ID number is 81304547050. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing has been met by the notice of hearing and the notice of code violation was sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraisal record. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall and at the property at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in case, including photographs of his marked exhibits and submitted to the special master clerk, I certify any of the photographs to be true and accurate portrayal of what they observed on the day they were taken. The photos you'll see up on, on the screen are today's photos. Um, this was ruled back on August 24, 2022, that the property owner was given 14 days to come to compliance for the outdoor storage. The owners did not come to compliance within those 14 days, has been receiving a fine of $100 per day since September 7, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $16,800 over the 168 days. The city's requested for the fines to continue since the property is still in violation, as you can see with the photos. Yes, so um, under this section, the um, uh, residential, I guess the belongings would need to be placed against the back of the home in the, in the rear yard, correct? Yes, stored within the closed structure inside the house, the shed, or back of the house. All right. Thank you. Is the property owner here? Yes. Uh, this case, this start with the officers is no longer employed with us, but I am well aware of this case. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, sir, can you state your name and address for the record? The Wong, 2173 Clearwater Drive. Okay. What are you looking at over there? 
this missing a, a photograph. My uh, rear porch was damaged by the hurricane. And I'm still fighting the insurance company to fix it. So I don't know how long it's going to be to take everything inside again. My car was approved to be over there before we say, Hispanic girl over here that I don't see it. This working here anymore. It was approved because he got a concrete path over there in the front. All other things, I have to wait until the insurance decide to to do something because I have already hired a lawyer because they are taking too long. And I don't know how long it's going to be. That's so everything that you see is right. It's over there because I had to take it out of the of the uh, enclosed uh, back porch I got because it's leaking everything over there. I see. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how long it will take with the lawyer now that I hired to fight the, the insurance company so I can put everything back. Well, can um, the city, can you clarify what it is, what are the um, some of the items that you're referring to? Because I assume you're, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not uh, claiming that the car is an issue, No, right? not the car. All yeah. the other items in the backyard, um, you see plastics, containers. Um, Everything was I mean, in, my, just, in my porch. This is just one photo. Um, Everything is in my porch. But my porch is, the ceiling on the porch is bended down because of the hurricane. One of the, of the trees over there, one of the branches is it, fall on the, on the, on the roof. Was it a screened in porch? Did it? A screen porch. This is a screen porch. A screen porch. Yes. And so, but those items um, for the city. Well, he, are, he don't have these, that picture because he very banded inside because one of the branches next to the, my uh, neighbor mm -hmm. fell into my porch. No, under, understood. But the um, but those items should be still lined up basically against the porch. Is that? Correct. So, some of the items should be up against the back of the uh, uh, the structure or stored or within stored, the enclosed right. structure. Yeah. Okay. And just to add, this case did start back last year, June 26, 2022. The compliance date was July 10, 2022, and we brought it to the special master in August 24. So we've had a lot of time, and from what I've seen the previous photos, I don't think much of compliance has happened. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I find um, that the uh, notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file as an exhibit. And I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case. And the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. So please make sure that you um, notify the code inspector when you have, um, as he said, stored the items properly in an, in an enclosure or line them up against the rear uh, um, yard, or sorry, the rear of the home or the screen porch, essentially where it was. Okay, right. yep. thank, thank you. Ma'am, before we finish, I would like to put it on record that the city is gonna uh, proceed with an abatement, um, abatement um, procedure on this property due to the nuisance. Okay. I just wanna put it on record. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, can I, Mr. Wong, if, if you would like, um, I, if I can get your information from you, sir, we do have some programs, might be able to help you get that fixed. So, if I can get your All right, 
I have case 23-025, 2681 Cortland Boulevard. My name is Todd Bede. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a co compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23025. The City of Deltona versus Rory L. Litzinger and Sandra Litzinger. The property address is 2681 Cortland Boulevard, Deltona, Florida 32738. The parcel ID number is 811201. 080090. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent, who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the insulation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for said violation is to obtain the permit for accessory structure. Application must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact the office with a permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation. We're sent certified to the property owner at the address and listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the, all the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. And this is a particular case, I have to have, bring up a little bit of history on the, pro on the property for the accessory structure. So have a timeline stated here uh, for the property obtaining a permit in June of 2013 for a 60 by 50 garage structure. Uh, permit was approved in uh, July of 2013, issued number uh, 1301558, uh, issued on the 15th of July. Oh, excuse me, is this timeline in the in the file? In the final file. In the in the in the case file here? It is not I had to I had to this was basically the history of what the because I had this the case uh, had history back prior to the date when this case was opened, so I'm trying to show that uh, when this permit first was opened. Okay, I just wanted to, I mean, it would be easier for me to look at right. it. Right, would you like the copy? Yeah, if yeah. you have one, please. Yeah, we'll just... the city department to why they need the extension. Uh, later in 2018, there was a, an update to the permit and they were the application for a permit 18-0625 submitted. That permit was the same, same structure, 
uh, approved on the 2019, February, and it was issued 4-3-2019. Permit then went in for another extension. Uh, extension was granted a six month extension at that time in uh, August of 2021. Uh, the estimated time that I, I, I could see would be around February of 2022. That's usually uh, permits are issued through for a, a six month period. So that's an that's uh, estimate that I came up with. Uh, the building official then issued a stop work order on the, on the property because the permit has gone to, to expire past that. So when, in the records, the city record it shows on February 24th, the stop work order for the permit on the structure because the work has not, has not been completed, it's been ongoing. Uh, and in August of 2022, I opened a case for the expired permit. And that's where the no permit or expired permit falls under the, the code uh, violation. Homeowner did come into City Hall after the notice that he received for the violation, uh, as you see it, August 2024, 2022, and no extension was granted at that time. Uh, the permit application would have to meet 2020 building code requirements per the building official. As for, so that is what we see up there. So I can, uh, the special magistrate here, we, case was submitted for here for the uh, ruling. The city recommendation on this is what the city would like to request for the building official that the building be taken down and the time frame to be 30 days. So the the um, sorry, the compliance is either the building be taken down or to obtain a new permit. A new permit, a new or, permit. Or a renewed is, permit, is, however you wanna. The building official, would, in my discussion with him, he, he's asking for the 2020 building requirements with change from the 2013 time when they first right. admitted. So there's a lot of changes I can't sure. speak on those because that, that's not my uh, So, right, presumably there would be need to be an update to the plans, the building plans and so forth for the new codes. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you can see all the pictures from today. So the... Yes, so um, the structure is just, okay, that's from today? Yes, the, the larger structure beyond the, the shed is what we're, we're talking All right. about. All so right, so it's basically and that's, that's just the exterior walls that have ex been exterior walls are up as erected at this point. Yes. Okay. And you said you were recommending 30, no, what did you say, 30 days? The, the, through the uh, discussion with the building official is, is taken down within the 30 day time frame. Okay, um, and what was the recommended fine? That there was no, no recommendation for a fine. The building structures are basically looking at, it's either that or the discussion with the homeowner may, may lead to some other resolve of the situation to get the- Well, yeah, but if they fail to do that, what what is the recommendation that you're making for the, um, daily fine. Uh, Richard had seventy-five dollars per day. Was, okay. Was my recommendation All right. On my, my Thank you. On, my, on behalf of me. All right. Cool. Did you have anything else? That's, to add? It. That's it. Okay. All right. Is the property owner here? <clears throat> Hello. Good, good evening. Um, can you state your name and address for the record? I'm Rory, and this is Sandra Litzinger. Uh, 2681 Florida Boulevard. That's okay. In Florida. All right, do you have anything you'd like to tell me about this case? Sure. My permits uh, stopped around COVID, in the midst of COVID. That's why it's been so long. It's about, been three years of COVID, and then the trust, the price of the trust has went from 4000 to $25,000, and I couldn't do that. So that's why it's been so long. And then August of 24, 22 is when the permit, I went to get another permit. And in the midst of doing this, I went and got all my uh, updates. Recertified. Recertified, yeah. That's when Deltona flooded my, my lake. And it flooded my house, I lost everything. 
everything in the backyard was two foot underwater. So that's where we're at now. The money I had for the trusses went to our living expense because we got no house. So for your current right resident. now we're waiting for the mortgage company and the insurance company because we haven't heard from them. So that's where we're at. The building is sound. It's it's 100%. All I'm missing is the roof. Mm -hmm. I didn't put the doors or the windows in it because they would have blown out. But I'm just, I went there to get the permits and they wouldn't let me get them. All I need is the roof. So well, right now I I'm think just waiting for the, the insurance trusses, money. The trusses have, were actually paid off right before all the trouble with COVID when the wood went up. So we stopped making payments and the wood just went down. So we got everything recertified, but they, they wouldn't take it yesterday. I think you went right. Monday or Tuesday. Well, what I'm understanding is that the that because you're presumably using are you using building plans from 2013 yeah, at this point? We keep getting it all recertified. Okay. Yeah, it's every, all up everything's to up to date, up to code. There's nothing. It's just four walls. It's a garage. There's nothing going in. It's for me to work in. So is all it, that's missing is the roof and windows and two two garage doors. That's all that's missing. So is it your intention to get the permit rather than remove the structure? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. working on this my whole life since I've moved to Deltona. I tried to get this thing built 30 years ago. back in the 80s. Okay. And you guys denied me. Well, so can maybe the city can um, elaborate a little bit. Would... The, the plans currently, they're not acceptable, essentially, to to issue a permit? Is that what I'm hearing? So what, what I was told is that the plans that were submitted were not up to current codes. We got them. Are they back? Or if they are, um, the only thing I'm missing is the trust plans, and that's where the money comes in. That's what we spent to live on. We had no house. We had you know, no cars. All our cars got flooded. Yeah, we would have to have all the full information in order to look at that to make sure that it's yeah. up to date. That's what he tried to do. <clears throat> If, if you could certify that the building is up to codes of today, then a permit could be issued. Mm -hmm. um, talking to the building official, though, he would only issue a building permit if the building was finished in six months. Right here's the updated plans for the building. The building did not change. It's four concrete walls. It's recertified. Do you want me to look at that as an exhibit? As Go right ahead. All right. Can you, someone please bring that to me? seal has been, you're saying it's recertified because the seal, I, there's I a had, seal and I it's had been the, signed. The, the guy that did, did the plans, redo them all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing's changed. Okay. All I'm missing is, like I said, when I go to do the trusses, they have to update the price, plus they have to update all the codes, so they have to redo all the plans. All right. That's already in the parts, though. We've already because called them. COVID and the flooding were pretty much stuck in the mud. All right, well, um, <coughs> if the intention of the property owner is to obtain the permit, um, uh, is the city willing to give a little extra time than 30 days? Because I'm concerned of, it the might. Si the city would be willing to give him a six month period to finish the structure and get your final. Well, the problem with that is because of COVID, the trust company's so far behind on other trusses. So I don't know when the trusses would be. But we can show that we paid it. I, well, all, I, I, all 
I'm concerned about is the time to obtain a new permit. So um, I want to make sure if, if these plans do need to be updated that you have sufficient time to get them updated. That's my concern. So, I mean, I would be inclined to give 60 days for that. Um, and then... Um, Can I get those plans back? Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to keep that? Well, I well, you I can have them back. In. That's that's the ones that I was handing in. Oh, are they? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I can't. The only problem with that is I can't admit it as an exhibit at that because I would need to have a copy for my case file. But I can give them back to you. I mean, you've testified that you yes. had certified records or he certified to plans. Try to recert or to do all that this week, and they wouldn't allow him to. I did it so, to yesterday. Yeah, he, he tried to go in. And I said, right. All I'm is the, tr well, the trust. Right. I mean, what I, all I can recommend at this point is that you meet with the building official and try to work out what the issues are with the plans, if they are sufficient or if they need to be updated. I can't speak to that, um, but I want to make sure you have enough time to get your building permit if that's what you choose to do. So I'm going to give 60 days for you to do that. Um, and it's either, in that 60 days, it's either obtain a permit or you're going to have to remove the structure. Right. All right? Okay. And so we'll give this back to you. All right, so I find um, that the notices were properly given in this case and that the uh, case file is admitted as exhibit an exhibit along with the timeline that was included in the presentation. Um, and I find um, respondent in this case in violation of the city code is charged in that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on what's six April 23rd April 23rd in the event respondent does not comply by the state a finding in the amount of $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the four stated date the respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please keep in contact with um, the code inspector to let him know what your plans are Always and do. and progress on getting your permit uh, or removing the structure, one or the other. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have 23-068, 2069 Jefferson Avenue. Ma'am, what was that case number? 23-068. Thank you. My name is Josue Garcia Segarra. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-068. The city of Deltona versus Raphael Jr. and Francis Wilson. The property address is 2069 Jefferson Avenue, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 8130744800010. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 304.2, which states that all exterior surfaces, including but not limited to doors, Door and window frames, cornices, porches, trim, balconies, decks, and fences shall be kept in good, good kept in sound working condition and maintained in good repair. Exterior wood surfaces, other than de decay resistant woods, shall be protected from the elements and decay by painting or other protective covering treatment. Corrective action is for said violations to repair or replace damaged exterior surfaces. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violations were sent certified mail to the property owner of the address listed with the property appraiser records. In addition, both notices were posted at the city hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the, all the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify all, any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day that they were taken. 
On August 20th, 2022, I opened this case proactively as I noticed the property had a garage door in disrepair. Several panels of the garage door had, been, had visible holes as well as peeling paint. I documented the violation and left the door hanger with a four week reinspection date as this violation would take time to correct with the male resident. September 17th, 2022, I returned to the property and the garage door remains the same. No attempts have been made to correct the violation. I documented the violation and posted the property with a notice of violation with the compliance date of September 27th, 2022. On September 22nd, 2022, I received a voicemail from Frances Wilson requesting a callback for an extension of time. I called her back and she stated she requires more time for funding. I told her I'd extend it till October 8th. On October 7th, I performed a site inspection a day prior due to scheduling reasons. The garage door still is, has not been repaired or replaced. I took an updated photo and temporarily suspended the moving forward with this case due to the recent hurricanes. December 12th, 2022, I, just, I performed a site inspection to discuss with the male resident. I asked for an update on the situation and he stated his family is leaving after the holidays and he plans on fixing the violation as soon as they leave. The garage door that day was still in violation. On February 10th, 2020, oh, sorry, February 10th, 2023, the garage door remains in disrepair. I posted a notice of hearing on the property and was unable to make contact with the residents. As of today, the garage door remains in disrepair. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has been notified, has notified the city of compliance. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and this is picture, no, this is from today, this picture? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I can see that, yeah. And, and it is, is it limited to the garage door? It's it, the exterior walls, but that's the big concern of the property for the exterior walls. The exterior walls of the home? Yes, ma'am. Because they are, the paint is, is chipping and peeling off? Well, more so the garage door has big holes in it. I don't know if you can see, like there's like yeah, a frame. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry, I, I'm asking, so, but you're also saying it covers the um, walls of the home, not just the garage does, door. Yes, ma'am. And, and that it relates to the paint? I mean, yes it does. Okay, all right. Um, is the property owner here? You wanna come forward? Can you state your name and address for the record? Uh, Raphael and Francis Wilson. Okay. Uh, Who would you 2069 like? Jefferson Avenue, Deltona, Florida. Thank you. What would you like to tell me about your case? True on all accounts. Um, it's not something that we also need to do, something we very much want to do. When I spoke to you originally, mm -hmm. I basically opened up, I showed him um, our situation for the year. It's not an excuse, but it is our situation. It was our water. Um, our water got turned off for several months. We were told the average household uses 14 to 17,000 gallons. In one cycle, we ended up using 177,000 gallons. We finally made one. We pulled out our 401Ks, got the plumbing fixed, water damage in the house, under the house, and we just made our final payments the end of November to the water company. That okay. bill, $2,438. Okay. Just in time for my sons and my mother-in-law to come visit. So we're in the process of getting it fixed. <clears throat> never filed a claim, never had a code compliance in 23 years. So now our mortgage company, which we have a loss notice here. I spoke to my insurance company as well as the insurance adjuster. So they said, we should, maybe this will help. They also told us to leave things as is so they can film damage and whatnot. So they've been out twice already. Okay. But, so it's so what you guys say from here on. Okay. Well, um, the city is asking for 30 days for you to come into compliance. So is that, in your view, a reasonable amount of time? I'd like to say yes, but we can call it a garage door. I'd like my insurance company to cover it is what I'd like, let's be honest. <clears throat> but if it's something I have to do in 30 days, that's cutting it really tight for us. Okay. Not to mention, depending who we contact, I don't know their window. They can say, we can't get to you for 60 days. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But it is something we plan on fixing. Okay. Um, and 
for the city, would you um, be willing to do 45, at least to give a little extra time? Yes, ma'am, that's fine. Okay. I'll give a little extra. Thank you. Um, so, um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case, and I'm admitting the uh, file, the case file is an exhibit. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, you have 45? 45 days, Danny. April 8th. April 8th. Thank you. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact with him yes. and let him know when you've fixed um, the exterior of the home. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is 23-071, 2069 Jefferson Avenue, so same address. All right. My name is Josue Garcia Segarra. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case D DL number 23-071, the City of Deltona versus Rafael Jr. and Francis Wilson. The property address is 2069 Jefferson Ave, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 813-0744-80010. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance 18-5, adopting the latest Addition of the International Property Maintenance Code 304.13, which states that every window, skylight, door, and frame shall be kept in sound condition and good repair and weather tight. Corrective action for said violation is to repair or replace damaged missing windows and remove boards. The statutory requirements for this notification of hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser record. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On August 20th, 2022, I opened this case proactively as I noticed the property had a visible broken window that could be seen from Howland Boulevard. The residents using garbage bags to prevent the outdoor elements from entering the property. I documented the violation and left the door hanging with a four-week four reinspection date as the violation would take time to correct. I made contact with the resident as he, and he stated he would get the violations corrected. September 17th, 2022, I returned the property and the window remains as initially reported with garbage bags and tape. I documented the violation and posted the property with a notice of violation with compliance date of September 27th, 2022. On September 22nd, 2022, I received a voicemail from Frances Wilson requesting a call back for an extension of time. I called her back and she stated she requires more time for funding. I told her I'd extend it till October 8th. On October 7th, 2022, I performed a site inspection a day prior due to the scheduling reasons. The window yet still has not been repaired or replaced. I took an updated photo and temporarily suspended moving forward with the cases due to the recent hurricanes. On De December 12th, 2022, I performed a site inspection and to visit and discuss the violations with the male resident. I asked for an update on the situation. He stated he had family over and they'd be leaving for the holidays and he plans on fixing it. It was still in disrepair at that time. On February, 12th, or February 10th, 2023, the, the window remains in disrepair. I posted a, notice of or posted a notice of hearing on the property and was unable to make contact with the residents at that time. As of today, the window remains in disrepair. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come in compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time. Or I'll, I'll change it to 45 days. Okay. I have a question. Sure. I'm not sure who. <clears throat> if we hear from our can you, Sorry, before you ask your question, yes. this is another hearing, so can you state your name and address again? Uh, Raphael and Francis Wilson, 2069 Jefferson Ave, Deltona, Florida, 3278. Um, if we hear back from our insurance company, is this something we still have to handle before they do, or I'm not sure how that works? I yes. was told it might take 21 days to resolve this, and then I don't know how to proceed forward from that point. Do I let them handle it? We've already got roofers, 
drywallers, I was going to have somebody work on the windows recently, as soon as we spoke with you last. We were told to leave everything as is for the adjuster, mm -hmm. which we had to go out there twice, by the way. Yeah, so it is your responsibility, ultimately. I mean, it's your property, um, so it would be lovely if the insurance company could help you and get out there in time, but ultimately, but you know, it's, it's your responsibility. Okay. So um, uh, is there anything else you want to tell me about this, this case? No, the same scenario. Okay. That's just one of the windows. That's the howling facing window. You had a lot more damage. Those have been done, brand new, replaced. Water damage on the inside. It's just the last one we've gotten to. Okay. Which I understand are an eyesore. We handled what made it livable first. Okay, so and I don't then. Where you come from. And this is currently an accurate picture. Yes. Okay. So. Um, well, I don't know how current. Well, yeah, that's current because okay. all the trees were taken on for property over the last. The windows. The windows, the last same. three weeks. Okay. And a landscaper remove anything that can damage windows. As a matter of fact, they're out there yesterday. Okay. All right. Similarly, I'm going to do the 45 days to give you a little extra time. Yes, thank um, you. And you're living in the home currently? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to find that the uh, notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the uh, case file as an exhibit. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on April 8th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Um, Ask What's that? Can we submit this? Oh, did you want me to I was to told look? it would probably be wise to buy my adjuster and my insurance company. What is it that you want to submit? It's a loss notice, I guess, from the adjuster. It's a loss um, notice? I notice. Guess showing our claim of what's oh, okay. going on. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll admit it if you'd like. Can I keep that copy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was just told to. That's All right, let me see. Thank you. Okay. So this is for the window? Window, uh, garage door. Okay. Roofing as well. Other damage that was done. I see, yeah. All right, um, yes, I'll admit this is exhibit B for the case file and we'll keep it. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, if you have any problems with that, we might have some programs here to help you get all that fixed too. If you want, you can get with it. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. But in 20 years, I'll take what I can get. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The next case is 23 138 905 Prescott Boulevard. My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed by the City of Daltona as a co-compliance officer. This case will be uh, DEL 23-138, uh, the City of Daltona versus Errol S. Taver. The property address is 905 Prescott Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 813-041-670-060. 
This is a violation of City of uh, Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, unauthorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action is of the violation is you must obtain a permit for the fence. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, uh, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements of this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing, notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notice Notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. This case was opened back on December 31st, 2022, when I came across a property with a fence in disrepair. When I went to our records to see if the property obtained a permit for this uh, fence, we did not have a permit on file. I left the door hanger stating that they would need to apply for a permit for the fence. I gave the property 19 days before I came back and posted the notice of violation uh, since they had not obtained the permit. I revisited the property on February 10th to post a notice of hearing due to the property still not obtaining the permit. As of today, no permit has been obtained for the fence. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. And you said how long? Uh, 30 days. 30? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, is the property owner here? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Can you state your name and address for the record? Errol S. Taver. 905 Prescott Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738-6708. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to tell me about the case? Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. The whole process takes a long time. And I saw somewhere where this is the fourth, the fourth worst damage and cost hurricane in the history of Florida. So it's gonna take months for things to get done. I have here a letter from the project manager construction. It said three times she tried to get in touch with the code um, officer and the call was never returned. And also in this letter that it indicates uh, about the insurance company, and I also have here where the insurance company sent me a message that um, things had been approved. And as you well know, there's been a lot of damage, so it takes time. There's a process for all of this. And I was told that the fence would have been done by the end of last week. Then I was subsequently told that the city denied the permit, said they needed something that they couldn't use the dimensions that they already had, they needed a survey. Okay. So I don't know what survey, I don't have a survey. I mean, what, I heard you telling a couple of people you can help. Can you help me find out how do I go about getting a survey so I can get this done? You, you know, and, and, and plus, I have th thousands of dollars worth of damage done, Hurricane Eon and, and Nicole. Is, is, and it, it indicates in here some of the damage. So you have to wait on, it's been five months since I made a claim to the insurance company. Not one thing has been done to do any kind of repairs. Is the... If, Sorry, is, is the fence a new fence or is it an older fence that has to be repaired at this point? Well, it's, it's been there for a little while. It was before the hurricane. Okay. But then I was told that they tried to get a permit for the fence and they were told they could get it. Okay, so it, having a survey. it was constructed before the hurricane. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, 
Um, you should have should have a survey from where you bought your house and your closing paperwork or something like that. If, even if you have an old survey in that, we can use that. Well, I was told that the, the whatever the city had, they would not use that. They had to get something from me. They would not use whatever they had. So I, I didn't quite understand it. So the reason I ask, I'm asking you is that someplace you can help me about getting a Whatever kind of survey that city wants. If you if you need to get a survey, we can we can see what we can do to get you to the right people to get that done. Because okay. I don't know why they won't use what you say that city probably. Yeah, and I'll have to look into that. I'll look into that, and I definitely will get back with you tomorrow on that and find out why. Madam, you need this, and then I can give you where the insurance is approved. Are you making a claim for your offense? Say again. They Are approved you everything. Yeah, they, but you're they making approved the car, the, the estimate. They approved everything. Okay. And I've been waiting on the approval for them to, to get stuff done. Not only the fence, but I have a whole, I have thousands of, of damage stuff done. Every time it leaks, every time it rains now, even though I have a crop over my house, it leaks in my house. Yeah. And even a light rain. Well, you know, so there's a lot of damage, a lot of other things need, need to be done. I got have to have a roof replaced. I have sure. to have uh, the ceiling done in portion of my dining room and all of my the patio area. There's so, a lot of work need to be done. This case is only about the fence, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so we're we're only talking about the fence and making sure that you have sufficient time to comply no, to I get all your that up. The fence and all the damage is um, was waiting on the insurance company to approve everything. Had I known all this is going to be, I would have done back in December. Would have gone in my pocket and, and had it, those three panels and. In, in the, in the, uh, the gate put back up. But I had no idea I was going to go through this mm -hmm. and, and what happened. So I, you know, I appreciate whatever help I can get yeah. from the city to get this resolved. So I'm um, just, um, for the city, um, I think in the past we've given more time to comply if there's a survey issue. So I'm just wondering what you, what, if the city's willing to revise your requested time. I'm, in, I'm inclined to give more time than 30 days. Yeah, seeing how he has to, I guess, acquire a survey as well, um, I believe that we can just do an additional 30 days, so make it 60, if that seems reasonable. 60, all right. So, sir, we'll give you 60, 60 days in 50 order to- days, you say? 60. 50? 60. 60. Oh, 60. Yeah, 60. I'll, I'll give you the, the date. Um, and that will allow you some time to get your fence permit. Um, because really what this, vi the violation is simply to obtain your permit to um, construct the fence. Because apparently it was constructed without getting a permit in the first place. So that's what needs to be done. Okay. Why do I go about doing that? Do you need this letter or you don't? Oh, would you like, if you'd like me to see it, can you bring that forward? Maybe yeah, let him know he's going to have to Thank speak you, in sir. the microphone. Oh, that's true. Can you show her this and bring my stuff off? Just make sure you use the microphone. We'll bring the phone also, ma'am. Okay. Do you have a, co you don't have a copy of the, what's on the phone though, do you? No, no. No, I just want you to see it, that's all. I know, but I have to admit it as an exhibit. Um, let me, I'll, I'll see what it is. That, the, the, uh, the phone is where the insurance company sent me the message that the estimate had been approved. Okay. But now it may take, you know, five or six months before everything gets done with uh, thousands of people having problems. And thank you, madam. Okay. All right, so I see for the record there's a text message from Monday. All right, 
from this Monday saying that the uh, repair estimate has been approved. I'm not sure what exactly that all entails, um, but. See, that means that before anything can be done by the contractor, the insurance sure. company has to approve it. Sure. And then after they get it approved, then they have to set up timelines when they're going to get things done. Sure. Because there's a ton of but people. So I understand, but again, this case and the violation is only about the fence. So I want to make sure you understand that. Okay. Okay? Um, and getting a permit for the fence. So... Well, thank you, madam. I appreciate that. <laughs> Government, other people, by the people, and for the people, and that's what you've done here tonight. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Can I keep this letter? Yes, yes, you okay. can keep that. All right. But I need myself. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I read into the record what it stated. Um, and I'm going to keep this, um, the case file I'm admitting as Exhibit A, and I'm admitting your letter from QFB uh, Property Restoration as Exhibit B, and we'll keep this copy. Um, so I find that the, notice, uh, the notices were properly given in this case, and I'm admitting the exhibits as I previously stated. Um, and I find respondent um, in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on, and remind me, 60 days? April 23rd. April, tw April 23rd. Let me ask one other question. Uh, Do I also moment. have a choice to just take that whole section down? I think, it, yeah, I think it would have to be the whole fence. Well, Not I'm just. Saying, I'm saying from right the corner of my house all the way to the other person's connection. Are you saying everything? Yes. I would have to take that whole $12,000 fence down, not just that section. I, 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 go ahead. Yeah, if you, sorry. If you choose to apply for the permit and put it back together, you could do that, or you could just remove it, but it would have to be the whole fence. It wouldn't just be that section of the fence. It would be the whole entirety of the fence. All right, thank you. Okay. Ma'am, did we have an amount? Yeah, I, I, I was uh, in the middle of that. Sorry. Okay, so we have um, 4 o'clock p.m. on April 23rd, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So, um, sir, please make sure that you stay in contact with the code inspector and let him know when you've um, obtained your permit or if you decide you're going to take the fence down. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Is it, are you the one I have to be staying in contact? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you in a second about the doctor. Why do I? Did I already do this? No. We didn't do 139 yet, correct? Yeah, it's supposed to be 139. I don't see it. I have it. Oh, do you have it? I think you gave me two. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, that's All right, so now we're on 139, correct? Yep. Um, we're going to go in along with withdraw that case because that falls in with the permitting as well. Oh, okay. So we're just going to withdraw that case. All right. All right, so they're withdrawing that case, so I don't need to rule on that, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I have uh, 2020, uh, sorry, 22-337, a Massey case, 930 Sweetbriar Drive.
Good evening. My name is Bashir Turkzi. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be Massey case number DEL 22337, the City of Deltona versus Guy H. Antoine. The property address is 930 Sweetbriar Drive. Parcel ID number is 8130661013. Statutory requirements. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and the notice of code violation being sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on August 24, 2022, that the property owner was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $100 since $100 a day since September 26, 22, until the property came into compliance on February 1, 23. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $12,900 over a period of 129 days. The city would like to reduce the fines to the amount of $250. Thank you. Okay, you stated that they came into compliance on what date? On February 1st. February 1st. 23. Okay. Is the property owner here? Yes. Can you state your name and address for the record? Giselle Antoine, 930 Sweetbriar Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32725. Um, the, when my husband came to court back in August, we were given 30 days, September 23rd, we hired a company to do the job. By September 30th, when the hurricane hit, the wall was already done. And I have proof of that. So it did not come into compliance as of February. Okay. okay. I even called him myself to let him know back in September that it was taken care of. He even came on the property on September 30th to notify me that we needed a charger for, a permit for our EV charger. And I came to City Hall on that day and got a permit. By that day, the wall was already up. Okay. Okay. Um, so I understand them trying to reduce the fine, but the fine should be taken off completely because it was completed. And I do have the name and phone number of the company <clears throat> that did complete the wall. Okay. Um, so can you... And Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And there was also, so there were two things when my husband came on August 22nd of 22. One was a sand bag, which was removed on September 18th. And then it was um, rocks that were used to pave the wall that we put up. And all of it has been removed. Okay. And so it would have been... Would have, it would have been, what, September 22nd was the time that September they had? September 26th. Oh, September 26th yes. was the time to comply. Just for the record, it is the, the uh, property owner's responsibility to call us and contact us, notifying us of compliance, which has not, not I been did done. call you myself, and you we, did come to the property, which is when you came on September 30th, and then left a hanger on my door stating, and then knocked on my door stating about the EV charger. So yes, I did contact you. And if I have was, to pull put my records from phone calls, I will pull them. That was okay. uh, related to a different case. It has okay. nothing to do with so, this case. So um, what is, all right, I'm trying to find, do you have pictures? Um, are you just telling? I have pictures of the wall that was built. I have the company um, that did the wall. 
Mm -hmm. I have all of that information. So the wall was built with, um, you saying? With the building material that was on That there. was the issue of the yes, violation? correct. Okay, and it was, and the wall was completed when? September, right before the hurricane. So it was started on September 23rd, which was a Friday, and the hurricane was on the 30th, and by the 30th, the wall was already up because during the hurricane, none of the water came up because of the wall. Okay, well, so was the wall completed by September 26th? That is my question. It was. Or at not, least the, the, the building materials. Yes, removed. they were moved by September 23rd. By September 23rd? Yes, which was the Friday. Okay, do you have pictures you'd like me to see then? Um, I mean, I can show you pictures as of today where the wall is built. I do have um, the email from the company that did the wall mm -hmm. um, and their contact information. Just for the record, the, uh, this case was for outside storage, which is not specifically for construction material. Uh, the uh, deadline was the 29th to come oh. into compliance which would I include removing all the items, not just the construction material. Okay, so I thought 29th. you just told me the date was the 26th. Oh, the 26th, I'm sorry. Okay. September so. the 26th, you are right. All right, so yeah. this was. And as you can see, well, we have a picture for uh, September 26th, which is the deadline. Both the construction material and the other items are still there. As you can see, Your Honor, in that picture, the trailer door is open my garage door is open. Mm -hmm. My husband has a business and he will normally clear things out of his trailer, repack the trailer as he cleans out his trailer. Yes, September 26th, my husband was outside doing this. But okay. I'm so sorry, but he constantly comes, Your Honor, and he's already told my husband and myself that we are now on the radar which whatever that means, it's just a constant non-stop. He comes for no reason at all. The day, February 12th, when he took pictures in the front of my house, there's nothing in front of my house for him to be taking pictures of. It's non-stop. Well, okay, so. Just for the record, all the, the times that, that I've stopped by uh, have been documented, and it's been either to post the property or to verify compliance. All right, so I see a picture, I'm looking at the case file here, so there's picture number two, which was from August 24th, 2022. Mm -hmm. That presumably was, or no, that was after the that was, hearing? That was, I'm, I'm, that was what was the hearing about removing those uh, sandbag, those uh, rocks, and there was a sandbag. The sandbag got removed on September 18th, and then this was the building material that was used to build the wall. Well, the sandbags I can see in the picture from September 26th. No, the sandbag is a white, it was a white sandbag, like what you get at Lowe's. Um, if you look at the picture um, marked as number two for 824, mm -hmm. that is what the hearing was for. That bag and <coughs> those rocks there. Oh, those are the, okay. Well, I can see that the rocks are still there on September 26th. Correct, because they started building the wall and that was what they used on the side of the wall. Okay, but that was the date for compliance. So it, it didn't meet compliance by the date that was okay. set. So the question I then have is, you know, when did it actually come into compliance? So let me look and see what other before the photos I have here. The wall was already built. There's no pictures in between that. Mm -hmm. All right. It was 
And it, what was the fine um, that was imposed in the in the original order? The, the original order was $100 per day. $100 a day? Correct. Give me a moment, I'm just looking at the pictures. All right. Um, it is still the city's burden to prove that the homeowner didn't come into compliance. So I'm going to, I'm just, I'm gonna impose a um, $100 fine because it's clear that there are still um, rocks and things here that were present in that original hearing. Okay. <clears throat> but the only picture I have is the 26th from September 26th. So I'm gonna, and you've already said you would reduce the fine, so I'm gonna reduce it to $100, which was what the fine was to be imposed each day. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, because it is apparent from the uh, February 1st pictures that they have come into compliance. From which date? February 1st, you have pictures showing they definitely have. Correct. Right, so. But that was 129 days after the, uh, the date they were supposed to be in compliance. Right, but you haven't, you haven't presented with me with any evidence showing that they were, mm -hmm. continued to be in non-compliance after September 26th. It is, it is the, the property owner's burden to call the city to notify them of compliance, which they have not done. So automatically, the fine keeps running until they notify us. That's, that's how it usually works. The well, reason why I closed the case is because I happened to pass by and I saw that they have come into compliance and I took that picture, which yeah. we're not supposed to do. I mean, that Your was Honor, just. He's lying because he came to my house on September 30th for another reason, which was for the EV charger that I had no permit for. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't in compliance on September 30th, he would could, would have taken a picture or could have taken a picture. September 30th, he came to the house to tell me that I needed a permit for the EV charger. Yeah. All right, well, I don't have, so I don't have any proof that the violation continued beyond that, and, and, I, and she's t provided testimony that it was removed. So I'm gonna do the $100. Thank so um, I find that um, respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the prior order. Um, however, the violation since complied, and therefore I'm imposing a fine in the amount of $100 uh, total for this case. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I also would like to present another case at the same property. Uh, okay. This, uh, due to the, the items uh, on the property being a mix of construction material and debris, uh, there was two s uh, separate cases that were opened. Okay. One was for the outside storage, which is the 37, and the uh, 338 is for the debris. We're, we're getting to that one next, I think. Is that okay, so, oh. all right. I wanna make sure I'm, I'm, I'm clear. The one, the 30, 337 that I just, uh, ruled on was it was the rocks and sandbags that were the issue in that case? It was basically for any item that's not considered debris that's stored outside. That's outside storage. The case was for outside storage. Uh huh. So any item uh, that could be construction material or tools uh, would be considered outside storage. 
Any other items? Okay, but I just, tires? I just, I just was looking at the pictures and looking at the rocks and um, sandbags, which I understood to be the issue. Are you telling me that's not the issue? That's part of the issue. Yes, <laughs> but everything that's stored outside is considered outside storage, mm -hmm. along with other items that could be considered debris of no value, such as tires, you know, garbage, those two separate cases. What am I looking at in this next case, in 338? Okay, if uh, we could pull up one of the pictures, I could show you the, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, for example, yeah, but we'll, okay, we'll move to 338 at the moment. Okay. Uh, my name is Bashir Turkzi. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be Massey case number DL22338, the City of Deltona versus Guy H. Antoine. The property address is 930 Sweetbriar Drive. Parcel ID number is 8130661130. The statutory requirements for notification for, of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation being sent certified mail to the property owner at this address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certified any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on uh, August 24th, 2022, that the property owner was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $100 per day since September. 26, 2022, until the property came into compliance on February 1st, 23. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of 12,900 over a period of 129 days. Can you give us a minute, ma'am? Mm -hmm. All right, Honor. Uh, after speaking with my supervisor, we decided to dismiss this case. Okay, so you're not seeking any any fines to be imposed in this case? No, ma'am. And withdrawing it? Correct. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's it for the people here. Okay. This is 23-30, uh, Massey Case, 2901 Howland Boulevard. Ms. Marion Laracy, I'm employed by the City of Daltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This is a Massey case, reference DL23-030. City of Daltona versus Family Dollar, Cole FD Portfolio the Third LLC, care of Family Dollar Stores, Inc. Sure. Property address is 2901 Howland Boulevard. Parcel ID is 813-039-130-080. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violations sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property address, property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as evidence and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. All photographs should be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Um, although this was a case provided by the fire inspector, so the photographs will be from them. This case was presented by an officer who's actually no longer with the city. Um, it was ruled on January 25th, 
2023, 2023 that the property owner was given five days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those five days and it has been receiving a fine of $250 a day since January 31st, 2023. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $5,500 over 22 days. The city is requesting that the fines continue at 250 per day um, until the uh, violation has corrected itself. Fire inspector verbally advised that the permit was not obtained for the fire system communicator. It was applied for January 26th, um, but still to, as of today is not issued. Okay. All right, so there is a permit application that's been filed. Yes, but permit's still not issued. Understood, okay. Um, uh, I am going to find, oh, and there's no one here anymore, so okay. I find respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. This is 23-012, a Massey case, 1528 North Normandy Boulevard. My name is Kristen Coulter. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be Massey case number DEL 22-012, the City of Deltona versus Nigel Ron Tucker. The property address is 1528 North Normandy Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 81300-332-0260. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on January 25th, 2023, that the property owner was given 10 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 10 days and has been receiving a fine of $150 a day since February 5th, 2023. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $2,700 over 18 days. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $150 per day and wants to put it on the record that the city will be moving forward with an abatement. Okay. Can, um, sorry, these pictures are from today, correct? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. All right. All right, so I see quite a bit of debris still in the yard. Um, I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Thank you. This is 23-023, 1791 Amero Avenue. Go ahead. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-023. The City of Deltona versus Marie Florence Strickland. 
The property address is 1791 Amero Ave, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-065-060-080. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 304.6, which states, that all exterior walls shall be free from holes, breaks, and loose of rotting materials and maintained weatherproof and properly surface coated where required to prevent deterioration. Corrective action for said violation is to repair the exterior walls, painted with a proper treatment, replace all damaged wood. The statutory requirement for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case began from a residential complaint received August 1st of 2022. The resident stated that he was dealing with an infestation that was being caused by the neighboring property being unkept or in disrepair. Upon my initial visit to the property, I observed high grass that was in violation. I then saw boarded up windows and doors to the home on the right side of the home. I created a case for the exterior walls of the home due to the fact that I could see deteriorating wood siding and decay in the wood around the windows and sides of home. The appearance of a vacant property and the information provided from the compla complainant, a notice of a violation of our exterior walls was sent out on August 2nd, 2022. No response from the homeowner, homeowner was noted after the certified mailing was returned, unsigned, and the posted notice of violation. The case was set, set for a September 2022 special magistrate was canceled due to the weather issues. I did a site inspection in December of 2022 that indicated no repairs had been done on the property. The notice of a hearing was posted on February 12th, 2023 for a special magistrate. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until that time the property has been notified of, this, of compliance. Okay, thank you. Um, and but am I looking at a picture from today? That is today's picture, yes. ma'am. Okay, thank you. So I see quite a few holes and broken boards on the exterior walls. Um, I'm going to uh, find the notices were properly given in this case and admitting the uh, case file as an exhibit. I find that respondent in this case in violation of the city code is charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on, oh, what's my 30 days again? March 24. March 24. Um, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. Respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Twenty-three dash zero six zero eighteen forty-eight Howland Boulevard. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is in case uh, number reference DL23060, City of Deltona versus TRSTELLC Trust, 1848 Howland Land Trust. Property address is 1848 Howland Boulevard, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-068-060-130. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1. 
which states that any owner authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall be first make an application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action is that the permit would need to be uh, obtained for the driveway, the new driveway. Statutory requirements of notification was met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violations were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property, re property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This is a proactive case that began December 11th, 2021. I noticed a new concrete driveway was completed. Um, looked in the system, didn't see a permit. Appears to be a vacant home, so I posted a notice of violation on December 11th, 2021 with a compliance date of December 21st, 2021. Um, as of today, there is no permit on file for the new concrete driveway. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that property owner has notified the city of, of compliance. And did you see them constructing the driveway? No, but I was there previously for a lot maintenance case and they had the old driveway and oh. it's on a main road so you can't miss it. And then I yeah. noticed that was done. I see, okay. And you, uh, just so, to clarify, you said, the, the case was established on 12-11-2021, but your documents say 2022, so I just want to make sure. Oh, I'm sorry, 2022. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and at this point, there is no permit that's been applied Correct. for or issued? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, I find that the notices are properly given in this case on admitting the case file as an exhibit. And I find the respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent uh, correct the violation before four o'clock PM on, we said March 24th. Um, in the event the respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the four-stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Continue. Okay, so this is 23-078. Uh, okay, and we're going to continue this one to March, to March yes. 29th. Okay. I don't think I need to have any more. I just will say it's continued. All right, and then 23-106. Uh, 2923 Clovis Drive. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-106, the City of Deltona versus Ronald Acker. The property address is 2923 Clovis Drive. The parcel ID number is 813-041-410050. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 302.7, which states that all accessory structures, including detached garages, fences, and walls, shall be maintained and kept in good repair and sound structural condition. Corrective action for said violation is to repair, replace the fence, and disrepair. 
The statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property purchase records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed in the day they were taken. This case was started on November 26, 2022 for the fence on the left side of the property being in disrepair. I took photos of the fence and proceeded with a door hanger. I gave the property six weeks to come into compliance and there was no work done. I proceeded to hand deliver the notice of violation on the 7th of January, 2023 to a man who resides at the property. I went back out to the property uh, property on February 10th, 2023 and noticed um, or and posted the notice of hearing. As of today, there's been no work done and the fence is still in disrepair. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 uh, dollars per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay. And this was, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. This is accessory structures in good repair. That's what Correct. the violation is for. Okay, yes, and I see it's, um, yeah, there's quite a few boards and things broken on that fence. So. Um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the um, case file as an exhibit. And I find, uh, oops, where's my, find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock PM on March 24th, um, 2023. Um, in the event the respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. This is 23-136-2923 Clovis Drive. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the, uh, by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-136, the City of Deltona versus Ronald Acker. The property address is 2923 Clovis Drive. The parcel ID number is 813-041-410050. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114, which states that furniture outside must be designed to be placed outdoors or stored inside a covered structure. In addition, storage of materials relating to residential use, children's play, uh, toys, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material intended to be used in fireplaces or permitted uh, burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard or to the rear wall of the home. Corrective action for said violation is to properly store or remove from property. The statutory requirements of this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was created on November 18th, 2022 for outdoor storage in the front yard. Um, I went up to the front door and spoke with the woman about the outdoor storage and how to correct the issue. Uh, the woman stated that all the kids, uh, her kids play outside every day and there's not a reason to put the kids toys away. Um, I stated to her that due to our ordinance, at, um, after the toys or any outdoor storage is done being used, they must properly store the items uh, afterwards. Um, I left the property and came back on November 26th, 2022, and all of the items that were originally talked about during my previous visit were um, not properly stored and installed in the front yard. This is when I hand delivered the notice of violation um, to the woman of the home. Um, I revisited the property on February 10th, 2023 and posted the notice of hearing. Um, as of today, when I re-inspected the property, the outdoor storage has um, moved to different locations in the front portion um, of the property. Uh, the city would like 30 days for the property to come to compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Can you repeat that you said 30 days and $25? That's correct, yes. Okay. And um, just so I'm clear, the pictures, oh, that's for the previous. 
that was for the previous case as well, but also had the outdoor storage items in the picture as well. All right, so this is all in the front yard. Yes, ma'am. All of the bicycles and containers and so forth. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case and I'm admitting the um, case file as an exhibit. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on March 24th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Okay. This is 23-137, uh, 2831 Summerfield Street. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This would be case number DEL 23-137, the city of Deltona versus Bridge SFT IV Seed Borrower LLC. The property address is 2831 Summerfield Street. The parcel ID number is 813-043-370-080. This is a violation of city of Deltona ordinance section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code section 105.1, which states that any owner uh, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installa installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action for said violation is you must obtain a right-of-way use permit for the driveway. Uh, applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted uh, to City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. Uh, all this evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Uh, this case was created on uh, January 19, 2023 um, for a right-of-way use permit. Uh, this case which was originally, um, well, this is a reference case, was originally started back in June of 2022, but was created uh, for a driver that, when, that needed permitting. Um, this case was brought up um, to supervisors and then determined that the driveway uh, did not need a permit, um, they would need a right-of-way permit. Um, so that case was closed, this case was created on January 19th of 2023. Um, I spoke with the company that owns the property and updated them on the case and the new violation that was created. Um, I made this phone call on the same day that I opened uh, this case on January 19th of 2023, um, and that is when I uh, posted the notice of violation. Um, during this phone call on January 19, 2023, um, I spoke with the uh, man that worked with the company um, and informed me what was going on. Um, since this phone call, there was an attempt to obtain a permit but got denied by our staff. Um, I posted the hearing on uh, February 10th, 2023, and as of today, the permit um, has not been issued. Uh, the city would, would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner um, has notified the city of compliance. Okay, so this is for, a, you've cited it as a violation of the Florida Building Code, but that the Florida Building Code doesn't govern right-of-way use permits, is that right? If I'm reading it correctly um, from the ordinance, um, it does not look like it this states anything about a right-of-way use permit, so. I mean, I, I'm guessing that you likely have another section of the city code that requires a right-of-way use permit, but it wouldn't be the Florida Building Code, um, which just governs building permits. Right. So, um, so I'm, I'm gonna dismiss this case. Okay. Um, it may, like I said, there may be another uh, right. applicable code section, but as as cited, I'm going to dismiss this one. All right, thank you. Okay.
All right, anything else for the good of the order? We can adjourn then, thank you. Thank you.